up your burette, and then you read the initial volume, and then you dispensed some. So here's that new volume, and then the mass, right? Then we have the mass that you wrote down. So first thing is this right here. Is this volume truly the volume that you dispensed? No, why? Why isn't that the volume we dispensed? We started at 0.52 milliliters. We didn't start at zero. So what do we need to do to determine how much we dispensed? Subtract, right? So we don't want to sit here with the calculator and do 2.09 minus 0.52 hit equal, then put it in our spreadsheet. So we use what's called a formula. We start off by hitting equals. And then you click the cell. So I want the volume here, the initial volume, minus. So I click the cell, then I do minus, then the initial. Hit enter. It did the subtraction for me. Now what I can do is I can drag this down, and it fills it in for me. But what happened? You got some incorrect things here. Do you think you dispensed negative 25 milliliters? No. So let's go back and let's check our let's check our formula. We look up at the top, B6, well that's good, right? Minus D4. Well, it does not interpret mass, the word mass. So what we need to do is we go back to our initial formula. So right here, and we always, our initial volume is always 0.52, right? That's always. So what we're going to do is use some dollar signs. So we go dollar sign, dollar sign, so it looks like our B5 minus, we surround the letter in dollar signs, so D3 with dollar signs around the letter, hit enter, well good, that's the same volume, but when I drag down, so now if we check this right here, B8 <coughs> minus D3, good. I just did 10 calculations in 5 seconds. Now the water mass. Is this really the mass of just 1.57 milliliters of water? Does 1.57 milliliters weigh 31.59 grams? No. No, right? What do we need to subtract? Mass. <coughs> like, which is what? Which is what? Good. Mass of the beaker. So we go equals mass minus our beaker, but what do we need to do? Dollar sign. And then we drag down, and there's our mass. Does it for me. So when you do that drag down, so if I click on a box right here, you got to take your cursor and go to the bottom right corner. There's a little square part. You got to go to the bottom right corner. Now density is grams per milliliter. So what do I want to what do I want to do here? So I do grams divided by milliliters. So it equals E5, this water mass, divided by C5. Now do do we need to have dollar signs for this one? No, because we always want these two divided by each other. These two, these two, these two, these two. So I hit enter. That's our density. Now I drag down. There you go. Did all the math for you. But how many decimal spots did we read our volume to? Two. Two. What about mass? Two. two. Now some of these, do we have two here? No, right? There's no decimal spots here, but we need to put decimal spots. Because what Excel does, if you put 16.00 in Excel, it automatically changes it to just 60, right? Because they're the same number. But we want to show those decimal spots. So we're going to highlight that data, right click it, say format cells, format cell, and we go to number and then two decimal spots, hit OK. Now we have two decimal spots throughout. So these first. 
<laughs> These first four calculations, how many sig figs are there, though? How many? Now here, these remaining five, how many are we going to have? Four. Four. So we need to right click, format cells, number, we change it to three decimal spots. Now it also asks you on this data here for an average. Now we don't, you don't need to go in a calculator, add these up and divide by the total. You just hit equals, type the word average, and then a parentheses, and then you can drag your data. So what I just did is I clicked on the top here, drug it down, released, <coughs> hit enter, that's my average. So now we need to graph this, right? We need to graph this. So I'm going to go to insert. We always want to scatter. And right here, scatter. No lines. There's no lines connecting your dots. So I click that. And I get a blank chart. So I can right click. Do select data. Let me do this so I can actually see the data. So right click, select data. I go to here, add. I want to add some entries into that chart because we don't have anything yet. I'm just going to leave the name blank. Now X. When you do slope, what is it? Rise over run. So what's our Y? What's going to be our Y? Is it going to be grams or water mass? Grams or milliliters? Grams. Y, grams. Then our X is going to be milliliters. Hit OK. Hit OK again. Look at that chart. Nice straight line. Now, we don't... Another thing it asks for slope, right? It asks for our slope. So what we do is we're going to click a point. So we click one point, then we right click it, and we say add trend line. We want a linear trend line because we want to get a straight line fit between those points. And we click here, display equation on the chart. I hit close, and there you go. There's our equation for that line through those points. And all these need to go into one document. Okay? One document. So how do we do that? <laughs> so I'm going to go, go here and open up Microsoft Word. I'm going to go to Word. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Here's a Word document. And what I can do is I just take my graph from Excel, hit Control C, go to Word, and hit Control V, and there's my graph in Word now. You can do the same thing with your charts. Well, your data table, I should say, sorry. Your data table. I can take my data table, highlight it, control C, go back to my to Word, control V, there's my data table. So this is so your lab report, it's just gonna be one document. Okay. Is this just the whole lab report right here? Well you're gonna have this is just water. Yeah, but like you're gonna have just three? Yep. Oh there are three questions you have to answer. That's right. Okay. No, yeah. Except here's the big. Does this? Does this? Graph? Is this graph right here? Does this look like a quality graph? No. What's it missing? Title, axes, labels. Okay. Since we're only graphing one set of data, you do not need a legend. So.
you can delete the legend. Okay. Now, in order to get the labels, because right here there's no labels, I can't do anything. I go up to here to graph design, or I think you can also do layout, but I just know graph design, and right here, layout number one. This will give you a chart title, axis title, axis title, and you will have to delete this again. But I just go here, double click, there we go. So we have milliliters, grams, right? Mass versus volume. Okay. Now that is a good chart you can put in. That did go away, didn't it? Then you just have to go back and do it again. There you go. So, that is what you're going to do that three times. Water, regular soda, diet soda. You need to do your data table three times. Now, last part. It says, what is the equation? What is the equation for density? Right? It asks you, what's the equation for density? Show it in one example calculation of density. So you go here. Go to insert. And it's right here called equation. Top right here. Equation. Because, here, I'll type one right here. Density is mass divided by volume, right? That's, I guess, one way I could write it. Or I go to insert equation, type in equation. Now it's a fraction, right? Mass divided by volume. So I go up here to fraction, and I can select what type of fraction I want. So I want this one. And I type mass divided by volume equals density. Now which one looks better? Then you do the same thing. Say I want to, I can do the same thing with some numbers now. So I'll go back, insert, equation. I want a fraction. And I'm just going to call it 2.00, yeah, that's freaky. 2.00 divided by 1.00 equals 2.00. But remember your units, right? So up here I should have 2.00. G, yeah, and milliliters. So my units would be what? <laughs> Grams per milliliter. But I don't want to do this fraction, so let's try to do this fraction. Right? 2.00 grams per milliliter.